Today we are going to start taking notes on Module 2, Lesson 1, Understanding Perception. On page 79 in your book is where you will find this page. We are going to focus on looking at the vocabulary, vocabulary word percent. I can understand the meaning of a percent as a rate per 100 and model percents as a 10 by 10 grid and bar diagram. I like to always circle and underline important items in my book. So, a percent is a ratio or a rate that compares a number to 100. Percent means 100 and is re represented by the symbol. For example, 50% means 50 per 100 and is read 50%. It's also represented 50 to 100, 50 to 100, and 50 over 100. A ten, we're going to start off with a grid. A 10 by 10 grid can be used to model a percent because there are 100 squares. We know that 10 times 10 is 100, so it makes it really easy to show and represent a model of a percent. The 10 by 10 grid, um, each square represents 1%, and the 10 by 10 grid shown below is a 45% because the ratio of shaded squares to the total number is 45 to 100. And here's the examples. 45% means 45 per 100. And you can see the different ratios and how they're represented. And 45% is how you write it out. The model, the 10 by 10 grid, would be um, shown like this for 45%. You would have a row of 10 or a column of 10. And it makes it really easy to count up to see how many are represented here. So this is 10. 20, 30, 40, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, so 45%. This is, is represented with this 10 by 10 grid. Other ways to show the 45% using a grid is to make, instead of columns here, go ahead and make some rows and do 10, 20, 30, 40, and 5, 45%. Every other you're still counting up the tens and the five, and then you can make a pattern. It makes it easier to count when it's in the columns and the rows, but these are also two other ways to show it. Talk about it over here on the side, right above the page number 79. What percent of the grid is not shaded? Explain your reasoning. So what I did was, I know the grid is a 10 by 10, so there's 100. I know that 45 are shaded. So I just did a simple subtraction problem. In 40, 100 minus 45 is 55. So I know that 55% is not shaded and 55 out of the 100 squares are not shaded. Continuing on to page 80, at the very top of 80, it says example 1, identify the percent. What percent is represented by the 10 by 10 grid? So if I'm taking a look at this, I'm going to identify the number of shaded squares. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, because remember each row is, a, is 10 squares. So if all the squares are shaded, that means there are 10 in each row that are shaded. So that means there are 50 shaded squares. So write the ratio that compares the number of shaded squares to the total. So we're doing shaded squares to total, so it's a part to whole ratio. The ratio is 50 to 100, 50 to 100, or 50 over 100. So the percent represented in this grid would be 50%. Second check. What percent is represented on this grid? So what I did was I went ahead and counted the rows. Here's 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62 percent. So 62 squares are shaded out of the 100 that are represented. On this side, the question, talk about it. How can you quickly determine the number of shaded squares in the grid and without counting every single squares? And I've been showing you and modeling those so you can count the completed rows and columns as tens. Let me just fix this S. You can go ahead and write that down. Example number two, model the percent. In a recent survey, 17% of the people surveyed said that they have a magazine subscription. 
shade the 10 by 10 grid to model 17%. 17 means 17 out of 100. There are 100 squares here. In this grid, to model 17%, you need to shade 17 squares. So in instead of counting all 17 of them, I broke it down into a 10 and a 7 because that represents 17. And I know I need one column and 7 in the next column. So 17%, that would be the 17 out of 100. A middle school newspaper surveyed the student body and found that 14% 14 of the students surveyed chose horses as their favorite animal. Shade the 10 by 10 grid to, sh to model 14%. So again, I did the 10 and 4 to make 14%. So I know I need one column and four. So 10 and four is 14. So 14 out of the 100, which is 14%, which is 14 to 100, the ratio. That is it for page 80. Continuing on to page 81. The very top of 81, let's look at now some bar models. So we've worked on the 10 by 10 grids. Now let's look at bar models, which we started using in module one when we looked at ratios. You can also use the bar models to represent percents. A bar model can be divided into any number of equal sections. That's an important thing to remember. To model 10% or a multiple of 10, oh, multiple, we need to make sure that we're thinking about those. Multiples of 10%, you can divide the bar diagram into 10 equal sections. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So each of these, and it's a multiple of 10, so 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 50%. And the rest of these are equal 10% until we get to 100. So they're multiples. We can count by 10. 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%. 100. The bar diagram shown shows representation of several percents that are multiples of 10. And like I just did in the upper one, one, one unit means 10%, four units, 40%, 70% would be seven units, 90% would be nine units. So if I go over here to the side, the talk about it right here in the center says, describe another way to divide a bar diagram into to model 40%. So what I was thinking is, okay, 40%. I can't get 40% to 100 evenly, but I can get 20% to 100 evenly and 20% to 40% evenly. So I could make my bar diagram into five units. So I did that here. I drew my bar diagram and I divided it into five units. Each unit is 20%. So 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, which would equal 100%. And if we take and we want to model 40%, we can say 20% and 20% would equal the 40%. Continuing on. To model 5% or multiples of 5, we would have to divide it into 20 equal sections. And as you can see here, there are 20 sections. And again, just like up above, you can show one of the sections is 5%, three sections, 15%, three times five is 15, one times five is five, remembering the multiples of five. 11 sections, 55%, so 11 times five is 55. And then we have um, 17, which would make 85%. The question on the side says, talk about it. Why would it not be to your advantage to use this bar diagram to model a percent of 23? So I was thinking 23 is not a factor of 100. I cannot evenly go into 100 using 23. So it would be very difficult to create a bar model for 23% because I would need to divide that bar model into 100 sections. And that would be very difficult. So over here, instead of 20, I'd have to make 100 sections. And that would be really difficult. So creating a 
bar diagram for 23% probably would not be the best way to do it. We're finished with page 81. Let's go on to page 82. Example 3, identify the person. So now we have a picture and we need to find out what percentage is represented by this bar diagram. So if I'm taking a look here, I have 0 to 100 and I have 10 sections. So that means each section is 10%. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sections that are colored in or shaded in. So that means it would be 80%. So let's fill this in, our notes in. The bar diagram is divided into 10 equal sections. Each section represents 10%. How many sections are shaded? There's eight, we counted those. The total percent represented is eight times 10%, which is 80%. So this bar diagram up here in example three represents 80%. On to the check. Check. What percent is represented by this diagram? So as I take a look at this bar diagram, it was a little different than this first one up here at the top of the page. It has less sections. So instead of 10%, um, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five sections. Five sections into 100% would be representing 20% in each of these sections. So each of these is 20%. So if I take that information, I have one section 20%, a, sec a second section, which is 20%, and that would be 40%. On to example four, model the percent. Use a bar diagram to model 65%. So in this case, it looks like that they have already divided it into 20 equal parts because 65 is a multiple of 5. So what I would just do is I would just count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. And I would just go ahead and I would color that in. Or I could think about this and say, okay, 5 times what is 65? Or 65 divided by 5 would equal 13. So there's 13 sections that I had to shade in in order to show 65% on this bar model. Going on to the bottom of the page, draw a bar model to show 35%. So this is what I did. I know that 35 is a multiple of 5, just like what we had up here in example 4. So I went ahead and I drew my box, my rectangle, and I divided it into 20 sections because 20 sections would equal 5% in each section. And I need to find 35%. So I know that 7 times 5 is 35. So I'm going to have to color or shade in th 7 sections. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. There are 7 sections. I shaded that in. That represents 35%. That's the, all for eight, page 82.